What's a problem you see in the collaboration space? And do you have any tips to overcome or avoid these problems? I think one of the biggest problems in the collaboration space is that it can be really hit or miss the level of results that you get. The motivations of the people who have created the collaboration can kind of be all over the place. There are collaborators who have really put their heart and soul into a collaboration, but they also make sure that they keep their target customers, the collaborators that are working with them, in mind as well and have created solutions for them that make it a true truly mutually beneficial collaboration. I think that's really the core element of it is that while most collaborations start out as ideas for individuals like I want to grow my list. I want to build my business. I want to leverage the audiences of others in order to grow. That being the vibe throughout the context of your collaboration can reflect in a lot of ways the success of that collaboration, both from how it feels to collaborate at that level, as well as the results that your collaborators get. Because collaboration, like other marketing tactics, can feel super gross if you're just doing it because you heard it's the the new thing to do. But if you're doing it and it feels good, it's sustainable and effective. I think think one of the really important elements of collaboration is that remembering the human element. It's building a relationship. So just like having a chat with somebody and getting to know them over coffee, there's an element of give and take that's absolutely essential that helps the other person feel seen and appreciated that doesn't need to go away just because you're doing some sort of marketing technique. It really is about remembering that there's a human being behind all the touch points. What's different about the way you collaborate and how can others implement it? I really try to focus on the target audience and the problem that's being solved by the collaboration. The collaborators gone to a great deal to choose who their target customers are going to be and to pick a theme and a problem to solve. And so I can totally pull something out of my arsenal and just throw it into any random bundle or pull any little talk and add it in. But without doing a little bit of customizing to the headline or the title of the object that you're including in a bundle or making sure that the topic of the map Masterclass you've given a hundred times over is actually specifically speaks to the theme and the target customers. That makes such a huge difference because the people who are going there and signing up for that collaboration have that purpose in mind. And so when you're reading through all of the different options and the different speakers and the different topics, it's really clear who's there to just like deliver the same thing that they always deliver and talk about the same thing they always talk about versus the people who are really creating some form of customization to meet the needs of the target customers that the whole collaboration is designed around. Again, it's that human element of like, yes, I'm doing this for my benefit at the end of the day, but I really do take into consideration the people that I'm serving and the partnerships that I'm bringing on to make sure that I'm doing my best to serve both of those groups of people at the same time. There's a give and take there that's really important because if you're really trying to develop a specific niche in your business, it's good not to get everybody to sign up for it because it really only does apply to certain people. But in the context of being able to take something that I've been going with Really hard on quizzes because they're just strategically yeah. really relevant to growing your audience. And my clients need to make good money at their launches. My solution is here's how to grow your audience in a way that you can reliably. I can deliver that quiz content over and over in a lot of different collaborations, but I'm not using the same title and headline over and over again. I'm saying this is quizzes for list building, quizzes to help accelerate your launch, quizzes to whatever. Fundamentally, the information is very similar, but being able to just make that slight change to the verbiage helps me fit into the theme a lot better. It kind of depends whether you should go really hard on your niche because that's what it is you want to be known for versus fitting into the theme. There's a balance between the two. What appeals to you about collaboration and why? My favorite part about collaboration is the human element. The best part about collaborating, while it benefits my business, it helps me grow and get leads. My favorite part so far are the relationships that I end up with afterwards. You can go from feeling like you're the only online entrepreneur in the world and in your little bubble to realizing not only are there people out there doing it, but they're interested in what you do. They're helping you find ways to collaborate. And every collaboration that I've really found impactful in the last six months, because it's really been part of my strategy for the last six months of the year to go hard on collaborations. All of the truly valuable collaborations that I did, the actual goal that came from those collaborations was deeper and more profound relationships with the organizers and other collaborators inside of that. That's just something that you can't find when you're trying to do it all on your own. 
when you've been in business for a while, your business continues to evolve and pivot and tighten up on what it is that you offer and tighten it up on who you serve. I'm in a stage at which I was really focused on reaching and serving these people. In the process of doing that, I have been leveraging other collaborations in order to continue growing my audience, but I'm also doing it in a way in which, let's be honest, sometimes collaborations can have a lot of list growth and then those people drop off afterwards because maybe they were freebie seekers or they just wanted a little taste and you weren't their flavor, right? I'm from the tech startup space. And so my core strength is customer research and customer understanding. And in participating in other people's collaborations, I can experiment with offers and ideas and share things to those niche groups within my list to actually get more information and feedback on this pivot that I'm building for my business in a larger way. Right. And so that's part of the reason Red, I've really been focusing in other people's collaborations is because I didn't want people who know me and love me and like me already. I wanted to just reach freshies across the board and put some experiments out into the world to see what would happen as I'm continuing to gather information and make a big pivot for myself. When it comes to what collaboration do I have on the radar for myself, I am looking at doing something more more for myself. And yet I think in the way that I plan on approaching it, it will be a much more niched and focused around solving multiple facets of a single problem rather than being a Swiss army knife of kick ass, right? Like a lot of the bundles and things like that. It's just like, you're the expert at this. You're the expert at this. You're the expert at this. I would like to kind of create a collaboration that is really focused around a very specific need like launching a community or planning your community for the first time and bring in experts in that space. There's an element to that that requires more relationship building on my part and that I'm reaching out to people who are outside of my world. While that's on the radar for me, it feels like something that's really big and beefy. So right now I'm really focused on participating in collaborations and learning what I can learn so that by the time I do launch my own, you know, I bring the heat. (laughs) Like you said, it's about relationships. I think one of the biggest things that I really tried to do. And I've learned this just from being in the corporate space or being on podcasts or whatever. Yes, the goal is for them to talk about me and share what I do. But the relationships that I get and the impact that I have is not because I know everything and I'm just so clever. It's because I really come in with the goal to make that person look like a rock star. And that is a completely different dynamic. So even in the context of a podcast where they're talking to me about my things, I want to make sure I have something to reflect back to them or something to say to the audience about them in a way in which we're both making each other look good. It's not like, thanks for the spotlight. I'll take it. I would like to think that that's something that helps set me apart from everybody else is because it's not just about me. Like people are going to like what I have to offer or not. They're either the right fit for me or not. When I can build a relationship by also reflecting back some of that light onto the people who are doing the work, it makes me feel good, but it also makes those people feel good. I feel the same way about my clients as I do with collaborators. Like at the end of the day, I want you to win. I want to see you winning. I want to be like, yes, killing it. That vibe feels great to me. So if I can contribute to that into some small way by making you look like a rock star or by shining the light on your accomplishments. Hell yeah, that's easy for me to do. That also comes from a place of like not really feeling like I need to put myself up against anybody. It's just not about competition. I've had to learn that lesson too hard so many times where anytime you try to put yourself first, your insecurities rear their head and oh my God, they're better than me or they have a bigger audience than me or at the end of the day, if you let it get in the way, you end up having like clenched energy instead of big, bright, beautiful, loving, like shine the light, make everybody feel like they're a part of this uh, energy. And and that's really, that's my whole modus operandi. Do you have a dream partner? I have two people. If I were to put two heads together with mine to create some sort of magical, amazing collaboration, it would be these two people. Brene Brown. I'm a community builder at heart community is really where I want to be. Big picture, five years from now, I hope to be like the Amy Porterfield of community, right? That's where I'm headed big time. Brene Brown understands human connection in a way in which both from a sociological study standpoint, I'm a strategist, I love numbers, I love getting to the nitty gritty, but she also really is all about human vulnerability and connection. That's essential as a community builder. And then on the other hand, I also come from the tech and startup space and I love myself a startup tech founder, Batty. And Gina Bianchi, who is the founder of Mighty Networks, is somebody I've been a part of Mighty Networks' world and infrastructure for a really long time. And she has an incredible platform 
platform for building communities on that I absolutely love and rep to my clients a lot, quite significantly. I also kind of want to be in her ear about some features and some ideas that I have, but I feel like between the three of us, there is a focus on the platform and what tangibly helps communities grow in a marketing and context and feature space. And then there is connecting with the humanity of human beings and forging those connections that is so essential that Brene Brown brings an expertise. And then I kind of get to be the bridge between the two of how you take that emotional capacity and put it into a framework that manifests itself in technology, but at the end of the day brings everybody together. That's my like dream collab. Hopefully Brene right. Brown sees this video one day. <laughs> Take <out>. a hey, <laughs> for real. <laughs> what is one piece of advice for anyone about anything that you'd like to share right now? I think the hardest part about participating in an online world, why social fatigue and social media fatigue happens is that people are often putting themselves at the center of the universe and putting that out. And that's just not how human beings have survived since the dawn of time. We gathered around fires to watch each other's backs, to provide protection, to connect and bond around something. It's that whole idea that community is really about gathering around a common vision or a common value or a common transformation. And when you're able to consciously set the you aside, and when it's not about me, my messages are more authentic, I connect better. There's just this element of emotional connection that other people understand when they're really truly being heard. And I think like my advice to you is, I get it, imposter syndrome, oh my God, they've got a little bit of comparison paralysis, perfectionism, all these things everybody struggles with and you're gonna struggle with for every stage of your business, continuing on and on because you've picked something that's hard and you're going to continue to step outside of your comfort zone every single day as everything around you continues to grow. So the more comfortable you are with that and the more loving and accepting and unconditional love you have for yourself and your flaws and your journey, the actually easier it is for you to have that same unconditional love and acceptance for the people that you're engaging with. And that comes through. And that's where all of a sudden it stops being about like, Ask me how I made $10,000 in three months, which seems false and self-centered and not about anything human being. Everybody's on their journey. And like having that human connection, it's a game changer, I think, in the context of people being able to continue to grow and reach new people without running into as many of the human shortcomings that we have. We all have it. We're all little meat bodies, can't help ourselves. But that just doesn't have to be the way the game is played. And I think it's the key to getting away from some of the things that drive everybody nuts about being online and doing business online. Great advice. This was great. It's always Thanks a pleasure. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I appreciate being here.